having looked at uh, number of uh, thermodynamic quantities uh, especially the four laws uh, including the 0th law of thermodynamics. Uh, we have uh, learned about thermodynamic potentials, uh, equation of state, uh, we have looked at uh, the properties of classical ideal gases, um, the concept of entropy and uh, that that at equilibrium it is a maximum value. Uh, we have to close our discussion on thermodynamics, uh, but before that we will do uh, some of the important uh, things about thermodynamics which are important uh, for a thermodynamics course and um, some of them are uh, not so very relevant to uh, the statistical mechanics course, but yet uh, we want to do them uh, for a completeness. Thermodynamics was initially uh, developed for uh, devising thermal engines and refrigerators and uh, these examples are uh, car engines and uh, refrigerators, steam turbines and so on. And if you look at uh, the schematic diagram of a steam engine, uh, it is uh, there is a heat bath which is operating at a temperature uh, T A and it is connected to an engine which is given by uh, E. Uh, so, this E is uh, drawing a heat Q A from this bath T A uh, maintained at T A and uh, it is rejecting uh, heat which is QB which is going into another bath uh, let us call it as TB. And um, uh, so, the work done is given by QA minus QB that is the difference in the heat. So, it is uh, just DQ which is QA minus QB here. So, QA and QB are indicated which are respectively the heat uh, taken from uh, the bath at T A and rejected to the bath at T B. So, this is Q A minus Q B and uh, the way one defines the efficiency of this engine is uh, the ratio of the work done divided by the input heat that is Q A. And uh, we know that uh, the various statements of second law of thermodynamics, um, they demand that the efficiency uh, the maximum efficiency has to be 1 and it cannot actually uh, attain an efficiency 1 in all practical cases. So, eta uh, the efficiency is should be uh, less than uh, equal to 1 and in practical cases less than 1. So, uh, the second law also demands that uh, the change in entropy should be positive which means uh, the change in entropy for uh, the heat bath above or which is maintained at uh, T A is uh, minus Q A by T A, uh, whereas uh, the entropy associated with the heat bath below which is maintained at a temperature uh, T B is Q B divided by T B. And uh, this delta S has to increase and for a reversible process it is only the equality sign would hold and uh, that would give the delta S uh, to be greater than 0 and this quantity which is minus Q A by T A plus Q B by T B equal to 0. Now, one can uh, easily calculate what the efficiency is. So, efficiency is given by uh, W over Q A which is what we have seen here uh, and uh, then one can uh, take this equation and then find out the relation between uh, these. Uh, so, uh, this is Q A by T A equal to uh, Q B by T B. We are taking the equality sign just to have a relationship between them. And uh, so, this is uh, gives you that uh, Q A is equal to uh, or Q A by Q B is equal to T A by T B. All right, and uh, one can put them here and uh, one will get that the efficiency is given by uh, there is just one line that you can do. So, efficiency is given by eta equal to uh, or less than equal to 1 minus T B by T A and this is called as the Carnot efficiency and this uh, gives you the maximum efficiency of, uh, of an engine okay. and this is called as the uh, Carnot engine. Uh, this uh, C A R N O T Carnot engine is the name of a person 
and for most efficient engines delta s equal to 0. So, this uh, equality sign would hold in the efficiency and uh, it, so it is it is uh, differs from the maximum possible efficiency by this ratio T b by T a. So, uh, if you want to uh, know how to make a Carnot cycle or a Carnot engine with an ideal gas then uh, it has to go through this in this PV diagram through all these um, uh, processes which are shown as A to B uh, and then uh, B to C uh, back to C to D and then D to A in this closed cycle you have to operate and where A and B are isotherms and uh, uh, C and D are isotherms as well because they are at a given temperature which are shown as T A and T B where the bath temperatures that were shown in the this Carnot schematic diagram. Uh, and uh, so, B to C uh, that is uh, this B to C that you see here this one is B to C is an adiabatic process and D to A is another adiabatic process. Uh, so, a gas a classical ideal gas will have to be taken uh, through this closed cycle in order for uh, this engine to operate. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, get into another topic that is often taught and is called as a Maxwell's relations. And uh, please do not make a, a confusion with Maxwell's equation in electrodynamics. Uh, these are called Maxwell's relations and uh, so let me just write down Maxwell's relations in thermodynamics. And uh, let me do it along with you. Again we start from this equation combining the first and second laws of thermodynamics. So, d u equal to uh, T d s minus P d v that is combining the first and second law and we are not uh, connecting it to a bath so that there is no mu d n factor at this moment. So, here uh, of course, the assumption is that u is actually a function of s and v which are the independent variables uh, and t and p are actually dependent variables. So, we can write this as uh, a del u del s uh, v. Uh, and a d s plus a del e as del u del uh, v. So, this del u del v and s and a d v. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, if you take a, a sort of a differential then this will be a d u and this is done earlier. So, there is a del u del s uh, at a constant v. Uh, d s n plus a del u del v at a constant s and a d v. So, uh, we identify uh, from here uh, that uh, we have this as uh, T the temperature which is del u del s and the pressure is equal to a minus del u del v. This has been done, but let me still do that. So, this is equal to del u del s at a constant v and p is equal to minus del u del v at a constant s. Okay. So, these are known to us since these are exact differentials this d u is an exact differential. What we do is that we take a, a del del v of this thing which is del u del s at constant v and this del del v is taken as a constant s and we take a del del s of the other term uh, which is uh, del u del v del u del v um, at a constant s and this is del del s is taken at a constant v. So, uh, this is nothing but t. So, we will write uh, del t del v at a constant s and we take a del del s um, at a minus. So, this is a minus uh, p. So, this is a minus del p del s minus of del uh, p del s uh, and at a constant v. 
So, what I did was that because these are exact differentials, we have taken a volume derivative uh, uh, here with respect to volume and this with respect to entropy and we arrive at a relation which is equal to del t del v uh, at a constant s equal to minus uh, del p del s at a constant v and this is known as uh, one of the Maxwell's relation. Okay. And there are uh, other like four Maxwell's relations which we are going to derive. Let us um, look at something very interesting here. If you look at the first line that you see here, there is really an amazing thing about uh, mathematical feature that is embedded into this first and second law. So, when u is uh, expressed in terms of the particular pair of variables which are as you see uh, s and v and uh, so the coefficient of the differentials which are coefficient of these differentials like this ones, uh, they denote you know the natural variables which are t and uh, p uh, for which are dependent variables rather or natural variables or dependent variables for this. Uh, the, the coefficients would denote the uh, dependent variables. So, this is something very interesting and um, so once again I just repeat this that uh, the internal energy is a function of s and v. Now, when you write down d u uh, that is taken exact differential and you write it as two terms which are shown here, uh, the coefficient of these two terms. Uh, actually are the other uh, set of variables which are the dependent variables namely the t and p and uh, uh, as you know earlier that uh, s and v are the independent variables. Okay. Now, uh, we shall use this uh, you know uh, generating relationships between the partial derivatives and uh, these will give rise to uh, you know the uh, Maxwell's relations that uh, we get. Uh, and uh, we will use different uh, thermodynamic potentials in order to get this relations or this Maxwell's relations. Okay, so, let us take the next one as uh, V to be uh, or rather this is the Helmholtz free energy. So, Helmholtz free energy is nothing but F equal to u minus T s and as you know for open systems there will be a minus mu n factor which we are not writing. So, d f is equal to d of uh, u minus T s which is uh, uh, d u sorry let me write it as capital U. Uh, please follow uh, certain notations that you are familiar with uh, mostly the internal energy is written with u, but in some uh, texts or articles or books even you find that as written as capital E, uh, we will continue with this notation that we have uh, introduced earlier. And uh, there is a minus d of T s uh, and this is equal to a d u minus uh, a T d s uh, minus an s d t okay? because we are taking um, exact differentials. Uh, now, uh, we can write down d u uh, as the T d s minus P d v which is combining the first and second law. So, that first term is a d u T d s minus P d v and then we have a T d s and then we have a S d t. Okay. So, uh, clearly the T d s cancels out and we are left with uh, uh, just minus P d v uh, and minus S d t. So, we will follow the same thing that we have done earlier and uh, we uh, would write f as a function of uh, T v. So, uh, this will uh, give us that d f is equal to uh, del f uh, del T at a constant v uh, d T plus a uh, del f uh, del v at a constant T. Uh, d uh, v and so on. So, now we can uh, again uh, do a comparison between the two and uh, the first term is actually the second term. So, p is equal to p is nothing but uh, a minus of del f del v at a constant t and uh, uh, s is nothing but a minus of del f del t at a constant v. Uh, 
Uh, now what we do is that uh, we will again uh, take a derivative uh, with respect to volume and pressure. So, uh, we uh, know that P is equal to minus del F uh, del V at a constant T and S is equal to minus of del F del T at a constant V. Now, we take uh, this um, uh, del S del V del S del V at a constant T uh, will be nothing but uh, del P uh, del T at a constant uh, V. Okay. Uh, so, what we do is that we uh, take a derivative. So, so let us take this first one. Uh, so, it is a del P del T at a constant V will be a minus del 2 F uh, del or rather we can just simply write it uh, del del uh, T of uh, del F del V at T and uh, similarly that is the first one and uh, we have a del S del V at a constant T. So, this is taken at a constant V and this will be uh, minus again uh, del del uh, V of uh, del F uh, del T uh, at a constant uh, V and the whole thing is at a constant t. Now, you see uh, if you look at this uh, inside the square bracket, you see there is a uh, del f uh, del del t of del f del v and there is a del del v of del f del t. Now, you can interchange the order of this taking um, derivatives and uh, you see that they are same and because they are same uh, there is we get another relation which is the second Maxwell's relation let us call it as S uh, del S del V T equal to uh, del P del T V. Let us look at the next one. The next one uh, we will use uh, the enthalpy. And enthalpy is again defined as H equal to uh, U plus P V. They all are uh, done in the similar fashion. So, this is equal to we take a d h and d h is equal to d of u plus p v which is equal to d u plus p d v plus a v d p and uh, once again uh, we use uh, d u equal to uh, t d s minus p d v that is combining first and second law. So, this will be T d s minus P d v plus a P d v and plus a V d p. Uh, clearly, the P d v will cancel out and we get a T d s uh, and V d p. Uh, once again, this H being uh, a function of you know uh, this uh, you can write down d H as uh, this T d s plus V d p and uh, h is a function of s and p uh, and uh, we can write down this d h. So, let us let me write it here h is a function of s and p and uh, once again you can do a d h which is equal to a del h uh, del s at a constant p d s plus a del h. Uh, del p at a constant s d p. Now, you see that there is a d s here. So, this is equal to t d s plus a v d p. Now, you see that there is a, a d s here. So, the coefficient is uh, t is equal to this tells you that if you compare these two equations then uh, t is equal to uh, del h del s uh, at a constant pressure and uh, your um, uh, V is equal to uh, del H del P uh, at a constant entropy. So, uh, now what we can do is that we can take a, a derivative of temperature with respect to pressure uh, and take a, another derivative of volume with respect to entropy and we will uh, get the equality sign for this. So, exactly following the earlier method. So, we have a del T del P at a given S is equal to a del V del S uh, at a given P. So, this is the third 
Maxwell's relation which is obtained from the enthalpy and uh, finally, we uh, use the Gibbs free energy for the next one. Okay. So, this is written as uh, uh, G is equal to H minus T s or is equal to U plus P V minus T s and uh, so D G uh, becomes equal to D U plus a P D V plus a V D P uh, minus a T D s minus a S D T. Once again using d u equal to t d s minus p d v, uh, there is a plus p d v and there is a plus uh, v d p and there is a minus t d s and a minus s d t. So, you clearly the p d v's will cancel and the t d s would cancel uh, leaving us with a v d p a minus a s d t and it is easy to see that uh, your g is a function of uh, t p or p t. Uh, so, g is a function of t p and then again uh, we uh, write this down as uh, d g equal to uh, del g del t uh, p d t is the same thing repeated uh, over and over again with uh, different uh, energy functional and then there is a del g del uh, p uh, at a constant t and this is a p. Uh, being a exact differential we can take a another double derivative for the first one with respect to p and the second one with respect to t and they would be same and uh, once we uh, actually compare with the one that is here. So, if, if you call this as equation 1 and this as equation 2. Uh, which were there every fair uh, earlier. So, we can uh, get a del s del p t is equal to a minus uh, del v del t p. Okay. Just uh, following the same things we get for Maxwell's equation. Let me just uh, show you so, 1 is del t del v at a constant s equal to minus del p del s at a constant v. Uh, the second one is del s del v at a constant t equal to del p del t at a constant v. Then it is a, a del t del p at a constant s uh, equal to del v uh, del s uh, at a constant p. And uh, these uh, del s del p at a constant t equal to minus uh, del v del t at a constant p. What you have to remember, you do not uh, have to remember all this equation, but what you should remember is that we are using uh, all the thermodynamic potentials, internal energy, Helmholtz free energy, um, uh, enthalpy and Gibbs free energy and arriving at the relationships uh, by using repeatedly uh, the combination of the first and second law. Okay. So, uh, uh, there are some uh, interesting mnemonic uh, devices or uh, uh, mnemonic devices the one that uh, helps you to remember these relationships and uh, they are written as uh, in a sort of square fashion there is something interesting. So, it is u and a minus v and a f and these are s and minus t here and you have a g here uh, and you have a p here and you have a h here. Okay. So, you writing various quantities thermodynamic quantities including the potentials and other uh, intensive uh, and uh, extensive variables. So, uh, the uh, these um, free energies are written at the corner. Uh, so, if you start from the right corner uh, it is if the, the way to remember it is that uh, this is like uh, you know um, they are um, alphabetically arranged. So, it is f g h and then u. Uh, so, this is how you go uh, from here and the two uh, extensive variables are kept at uh, the two uh, middle positions uh, on the on the first row 
and on the left uh, middle of the left uh, column and uh, we put uh, again the two intensive variables which are uh, with some signs which are important because to get these Maxwell's relations correct. Uh, so, they are minus T and P. So, if you uh, really you know start from this uh, like this uh, and then you go like go like this uh, and then you then you go like this and then you go like this and then you come like this ok. So, the direction is like this. So, you can um, you know follow this path and um, uh, you can just get these relations like all these following this minus. So, there is a minus uh, 1 into a uh, del s uh, del p uh, t is equal to a minus 1 into a minus 1 which gives you a plus and a del v del uh, t p and so on so forth. This is the relation that we have seen here uh, del s del p t minus del v del t p. Uh, so, this minus sign is interchanged. Uh, so, this is that uh, s and p. So, del s del p you come from here to here and uh, then you have a uh, del v del t uh, and uh, these uh, uh, negative signs are uh, arranged and this is just a way of you know remembering this for Maxwell's uh, relations. The interesting uh, by themselves, but if you remember them there is nothing uh, there is no need for such a device. All right. Let me carry on little more with the discussion on the thermodynamic potentials and the reason for doing that is uh, that we will introduce something called as a Legendre transformation. And what this is? Um, it uh, makes us transform uh, from one thermodynamic potential to another and uh, that means that uh, these in uh, these potentials are not independent which I think you understand very well from the form, but how they are connected and uh, what is the relationship between them. Uh, one can make a formal platform in order to explain this uh, interrelationships between different uh, thermodynamic potentials using a Legendre transform. And uh, we will uh, look at uh, sort of in brief what Legendre transformation is, but uh, let me um, you know try to sort of uh, give you a feeling that what we are trying to do. So, uh, we uh, take this uh, u to be a function of uh, s, v and n which we have already seen. This is for an open system and uh, particularly we are going to you know make a distinction between open system and closed system or isolated system. In fact, um, uh, we will just see in a while the difference between them and uh, so this is d u equal to uh, T d s minus uh, P d v uh, plus a mu d n. Uh, let us call this as equation number 1 ok. This is combining first and second law where T is given as uh, del u del s uh, v n uh, P is nothing but minus del u del v um, s n uh, and a mu is uh, del u del n um, and s and v. Okay. So, these are um, the relationships of all these uh, the coefficients uh, in terms of the differentials. So, uh, the temperature, pressure and mu all are intensive variables and they are expressed in terms of the extensive variable. And similarly, if we now convert it into S and in fact, S the entropy is an important thing not only uh, that we have seen uh, through uh, second law of thermodynamics but it is an important thermodynamic potential especially for the closed system. So, we can write down S as you know a function of u, v and n use S as a thermodynamic potential. This will give us a d S is equal to again a 1 over T uh, d u plus a P over T um, d v and minus mu over T d n. 
uh, and uh, these are the quantities that you get and uh, we'll uh, sort of this let's call it as equation 3 and uh, if you again open it uh, like write ds equal to del s del u uh, at constant vn into du and so on and so forth and then okay let me write that down uh, just to avoid any um, so there is a del s a del u at a constant v n and a d u plus a del s del v at a constant u n d v plus a del s a del n at a constant u and v into d n and uh, compare between equation 3. So, you have a d u here the first term and the coefficient is 1 over t. So, del s del u is equal to so, 1 over t is equal to del s del u uh, v n p over t is nothing but equal to uh, del s del v uh, u n uh, and uh, uh, mu over or minus mu over t equal to del s del n uh, u v. Okay. Uh, let us call this as equation 4. Okay. So, these are uh, nicely uh, defined uh, just like we have used uh, uh, u to be a function of s v n, uh, we can use s as a function of u v n and uh, there is an equivalent description um, using everything that we are aware of. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this equation 1 and uh, 3, uh, these are called as uh, the uh, equation of state of the system. Equations of state. Okay. So, uh, u and s can be obtained by integrating equation 1 and 3. Okay. And sometimes if you look at equation 3 which is that for the ds, uh, it is more useful uh, because um, uh, you know uh, the equilibrium state of a system is uh, a state of maximum entropy. So, ds is maximized and that is the reason that we uh, sometimes we find uh, more uh, this equation 3 to be more useful than equation 1. Nevertheless, uh, I mean this uh, they are uh, called as the equations of state. Now, you know these extensive variables such as u, v, s, n, etcetera, they of course uh, vary with the size of the system as you know, uh, they are convenient while discussing closed systems or isolated systems. So, I write useful in discussing isolated systems because they uh, attain constant values. Okay. However, when you have a system connected with a heat bath or an open system or uh, there are diathermic walls that we have studied earlier, then these extensive variables are not very useful. Rather, one actually it is easier to talk about the intensive variable. And in any case, the intensive variables are easier to control and the intensive variables are nothing but uh, you know uh, this uh, T, P, mu, etcetera of the system. Okay. So, what we look for is a a transformation from S or U uh, to another potential and which is a function of of these um, uh, T which is nothing but equal to del u del s 
at constant v or uh, p which is nothing but uh, minus uh, del u del v uh, at a constant uh, s uh, and n and maybe uh, all that. So, v and n and this s and n and things like that. Okay. So, uh, we look for a transformation uh, of this uh, change in thermodynamic potential from either s or u uh, to uh, these uh, a function which is a function of not the extensive variables which are u v s n, but they are functions of the intensive variable which are t and p. Because uh, you see what will happen is that uh, in, uh, in the event that a system is connected to a bath uh, say a heat bath, it will eventually come to an equilibrium at a given temperature t uh, which is an intensive variable uh, or there will be a pressure uh, which one can uh, you know maintain at a constant pressure by uh, adjusting the, um, the piston um, at a given position. Okay. So, uh, this is done by a general method uh, called as the Legendre transform or transformation. Okay. There is an important thing. So, let me um, quickly uh, sort of tell you what Legendre transformation is, so that uh, it is easier to understand. The idea is simple, we go from one variable to another variable that is all. Okay. So, uh, let me uh, write down uh, some f uh, which is nothing but f of x. So, we take a, a function which is only a function of x and uh, what we do is that we uh, would uh, go from this f of x uh, to another function which is g and uh, that is a function of another variable uh, we can call it x prime or we can call it g p. So, that uh, the nature of the function remains same, but uh, while f is solely a function of x. Uh, g will be a function solely a function of p and now we are doing it for one variable, but we can do it for multiple variables just uh, following the same method that we are going to discuss here. All right. So, uh, we have a d f which is equal to a d f a d x uh, into d x so, or del f del x, uh, I was just writing it because it is just a one variable. So, uh, we can write it as d f d x. So, this is equal to p of x into d x, okay, where uh, of course, p of x is equal to the derivative of the function. Okay. Now, consider this uh, graphically. So, uh, let us have a function arbitrary function like this. Okay, so, this is f of x and you have x. Now, take a point x 0 say here. So, this is x 0. So, uh, identify uh, the point where uh, this is f of x 0. So, I take a point which is uh, x 0 f of x 0 this point here okay. and now uh, draw a tangent let me try to do it. Um, it is not very good, but you know what is happening. So, I draw a tangent t of x. So, I write t of x uh, is the tangent at x 0 f of x 0 and so on. Okay. And this uh, cuts the y axis at g of x 0. Okay. And uh, so, this is this is all what we need. And um, uh, so, this t uh, x uh, has some equation which we are going to write in just a while. And um, this t x as I said this uh, cuts the y axis which means at x equal to 0 at this value. Uh, and we will show that so, a priori will show that 
g of p is purely a function of p. And this is the legender transform or transformation that we are talking about. Okay. Let me uh, write down the equation for T of x. So, T of x this line that you see is a tangent line it is f of x 0 plus a f prime at x 0 x minus x 0. This elementary this trigonometry that uh, we have uh, or rather uh, uh, geometry that we have not trigonometry geometry. So, T of x is equal to f of x 0 f prime x 0 x minus x 0. The intersection with y axis is uh, g uh, uh, is equal to t at uh, x equal to 0. Okay. So, this uh, g at x 0 is equal to t at, uh, at x equal to 0. Okay. All right. So, um, so g of x 0, let me go to the next page. So, g of x 0 is equal to f of x 0 minus x 0 f prime of uh, f prime of x 0 correct. So, this is a equation that we know. Now, this is at a given point x 0, but it can be at any point. So, we can generalize it to any point that is uh, uh, g of x is equal to f of x minus x uh, p of x. Okay. If it is true at uh, x 0 which is an arbitrary point anywhere on the curve, uh, then it is true for any uh, variable x. And uh, just to remind you that, uh, so let us call this as equation 1 and uh, p of x is nothing but uh, d f d x. Okay. Now, uh, taking um, a differential with respect to uh, 1. So, I have a d g which is equal to a d f uh, just eliminating this depend x dependencies minus x d p minus p d x. This lo looks more like the thermodynamic differentials that we were taking. So, let us call this as equation 2. Uh, now, introduce d f is equal to p d x. Okay, which can be seen from here. Uh, so, d x uh, is or d f is equal to d f equal to p d x. Okay. So, uh, we can write down this as um, d g it is equal to a p d x minus a x d p minus a p d x clearly this cancels out. So, d g equal to a minus x d p. So, uh, from the uh, discussion that we have, now you see that uh, g is a function of p only okay? because p is the uh, independent variable, uh, x is a dependent variable. So, g is a function of p only uh, and uh, if you want to actually calculate the explicit form of g that is possible. So, we will use uh, uh, p is equal to f prime. And uh, uh, it is uh, possible to define g unambiguously and a function of uh, uh, solely on p if uh, this quantity exists, which is f prime of x uh, inverse of that if it exists. Because if you see that uh, del f del x is p, so the inverse of this is 1 over p. Uh, so, that would exist if only p exists which means that it does not blow up which means that this quantity does not blow up. So, this uh, uh, tells you that uh, x is equal to uh, f prime uh, p and inverse of that and uh, so we can put it down into equation 2 or rather equation 1 and write g of p equal to uh, f of uh, uh, f prime of p uh, inverse uh, which is uh, which is f of x because x is equal to uh, this thing. So, uh, let me if you want I can put another bracket just to. So, uh, this uh, is a function. So, that is f of x 
that is f of x in 1 and a minus that is the second term is uh, f prime of p uh, inverse of that and multiplied by p which is uh, which is there in the second term. So, this is the second term in equation 1. So, this is the first term and this is the second term. Okay. Very well. So, uh, that tells you that uh, you can see it very clearly that uh, g is uh, purely a function of p. So, g p is solely a function of a function of p, which means that that will only be true if p is not equal to 0, okay, which makes sense. Uh, let me give you a simple example just to uh, make this point clear. Uh, consider f of x equal to x square. So, f prime of x is equal to 2 x which is according to our convention it is equal to p. So, g of x putting into the equation 1 it is equal to x square minus p x. Uh, now, we have to eliminate x uh, using so, eliminate x using x equal to p by 2 which is coming from this equation c f prime equation above. Okay. So, if you do that uh, then uh, your uh, f prime p the inverse of this this becomes equal to x which is equal to uh, p by 2 and then uh, the g of p is equal to uh, 1 fourth p square because it is x square the first term uh, and then minus p x uh, that is half of uh, minus half of p square because x is p by 2 and then multiplied by uh, p. So, it is p square by 2 and this is equal to minus 1 fourth p square. So, now you uh, we got g solely a function of p and you can see it easily that dg this is equal to a minus half p dp uh, which is my nothing but minus x dp which is correct which is what we have just got uh, earlier. Okay. So, uh, this is for any uh, arbitrary function and as I said that uh, it this Legendre transformation can be generalized to more variables. Let us just see this uh, for the thermodynamic potential. So, uh, let us say the free energy and internal energy. So, Helmholtz free energy. So, F uh, Helmholtz free energy and uh, internal energy. So, one of them is X and one of them is P. Okay. So, uh, f is equal to uh, u minus uh, T s uh, which is nothing but minus P v plus mu n. So, uh, for uh, the internal energy we of course, are familiar. Now, we are talking about a, a not a closed or isolated system, we are talking about an open system and this is very important because uh, uh, we have these mu that needs to be considered now. And so, d u is equal to T d s minus P d v plus a mu d n and uh, we can. Uh, so, this is uh, for the d u and for the d f it is equal to uh, d u uh, minus s d t uh, minus T d s and again we use uh, d u equal to T d s minus P d v. Uh, so, minus s d t minus t d s uh, this will cancel and d f becomes equal to. Uh, uh, so, this is a minus uh, and there will be a, a plus a mu d n uh, which would be there uh, mu d n uh, 
and uh, this would be uh, d f would be equal to minus s d t minus p d v plus a mu d n. So, what we have achieved by this? So, what I want to uh, stress upon is that uh, f and u are connected by Legendre transformation. So, while u was a function of s, v, and n, f is a function of uh, t, v, and n. So, we have eliminated s. because s uh, is not a useful quantity um, when you have connected it to a temperature bath or a heat bath and it is a, a sort of a, a non um, isolated system, it is an open system and then s is um, I mean it is more uh, convenient to talk about uh, the T V n uh, in uh, replacing s by T uh, which is a uh, uh, intensive variable T is an intensive variable and indeed uh, when you uh, keep a system in contact with a bath uh, the temperature becomes a constant or remains constant whereas, it is difficult to talk about entropy. So, the whole idea is that uh, these all these thermodynamic potentials that we have talked about F, uh, G, H, U, etcetera uh, they are useful in their own rights and sometimes uh, one is more useful to talk about than the other and here uh, in a limited way of course, you see that uh, u and f are functions of multiple variables. So, you this legendary transformation that we have uh, taught on a uh, sort of a general sense uh, that needs to be you know uh, we have uh, done the legendary transformation in a specific sense it needs to be generalized to larger number of variables. Nevertheless, the central message is that uh, all these thermodynamic potentials are um, connected or they are related to each other by the legendary transformation. Uh, we will stop here uh, with the thermodynamics part and uh, would carry on uh, with uh, the statistical mechanics, the beginning of statistical mechanics. Thank you. Mm -hmm.